check the records between August 2015, when we received the Agway Committee and began the outreach, until May, June 2016, there was not one incident of any such killing in Southern Kaduna. So we felt that we were succeeding. We felt that we had got the transhumans out of the equation and can now focus on resolving the issues between local herdsmen and farmers, which, which, which is still an issue, okay? But my, you know, my, and, and yes, we offered them money. We said, look, if we have to pay you not to kill our people, we're happy to do it. Is that, the, is that the only solution that, that you're adopting to, to pay them to stop the killing? That is the only solution we can see. If anyone has a better solution, you should give us. If, if, if you have somebody in Guinea that you cannot prove uh, uh, is responsible for this, but you say, look, we apologize, this has happened. But it if, if it didn't happen problem. in my time. Okay, I'm the governor now, this has happened. We apologize that you are caught up in our domestic issues. Have you lost cattle? We can pay. Have you lost lives? We can pay compensation. Compensation for lives and property has foundations even in the Quran and the Bible. Okay? So I don't understand why people would say, but, but, but what I said and what we tried to do was twisted, okay, by one newspaper largely to say that I am paying herdsmen to kill. What we were trying to do was offering money to them to say, don't kill our people. And frankly, as the governor of the state, the life of every citizen of that state and his property is, the, is, is on my head. I will stand before God and be asked, what did you do to ensure that that person is not killed or his property destroyed? Okay. I am prepared to offer you money if you feel that you're offended and you are going to uh, c collect people to come and kill people. I'm prepared to offer you money not to do it. I have no apologies for that. But to twist that to say that, oh, Erufai is now paying hearts men to kill, I think is most irresponsible. Now, in my opinion, and when you look at the history, this problem has been there. Okay, the Southern Kaduna communities were attacked yeah. under Yakoa. Okay? He tried to do something about it and succeeded to some extent. They were attacked under my predecessor. Okay, well, let's follow the I am the that. one trying to solve it. And we'll, I'm the we'll, one being attacked. We'll still come to that a little further, but let's get Markwe in. Uh, she's got a question. Markwe. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, Governor Alrafai, good morning. Uh, I think that this particular instance of uh, the, the crisis in 2011, you shared with us when we came to Kaduna State for yes. the economic summit in that state sometime in April 2016. Yes. You talked about this particular instance, the Agwai Committee, and yes. what you had done to yeah. try and reach out to farmers. And as at that time in April, you said that for close to six months, yeah. uh, there had been there had been hardly any killings up to that time. Yes. But then, as you rightly pointed out, this does not explain the new wave of violence that you know Southern Kaduna began to experience shortly after what in your opinion was the reason for the renewed crisis uh you know that happened after the headsmen outside the country even though a lot of people have their criticisms for that and mm. they fought it uh you know but what happened in southern kaduna uh, is it is it still about what happened in 2011 what happened to the what happened what caused the renewed wave of violence that we began to see from august down to december uh 2016 well, you know, I, I, I can only speculate as to the reasons, okay? I, I, I felt and I told you then that we had isolated the problem of the transhumans, which was more insidious and more difficult to handle. And we felt that what needed to be done within Kaduna State was to begin a process of peace building. And since I was sworn in, I had reached out to the governor of Plateau State, Governor Simon Lalong, who has a similar problem, okay? Uh, his problem is purely domestic. It was a dispute between uh, Hausa Fulani so-called settlers in, in Jos with uh, the original inhabitants around Jos called the Biroms, okay? Two ethnic groups were fighting for years. They were killing each other. And uh, when we got elected, I spoke to Lalong. I said, you know, Governor Lalong, you and I have a difficult task because we are the front line of this crisis. And because of the diverse nature of both Kaduna and Plateau states, we have become targets 
of agents of division and conflict entrepreneurs because uh, there is greater capacity to cause crisis in Kaduna. We have over 50 ethnic groups uh, and plateau uh, because of the diversity of these two. So we need to work together. Uh, Lalong uh, uh, was working with an NGO called Center for Humanitarian Dialogue uh, that helped broker peace in Jos. And Jos has been quiet since then. So I asked Governor Lalong to get HD uh, to come to Kaduna. And they came and they started working on peace building, domestic peace building, to look at what has happened in the past, to agree to live in peace, to apologize for past wrongs done to one another, and begin a process of peace building. And by March 2016, HD had brought 32 warring communities together to sign an agreement to live in peace, to offer mutual apologies, and to begin a process of peace building and rebuilding their communities. I went to Kafanchan with Simon Lalong, uh, Governor Simon Lalong, and we signed that, what we call Kafanchan Declaration, facilitated by the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue with funding from the Norwegian government, okay? And we thought that we, 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 we having taken out the transhumans pastoralists, the foreigners out of the equation, we can now focus on the domestic issues. Of course, there is a long history of bitterness uh, between the ethnic groups, killings and destruction of property that, as I said, were never addressed. And we thought that the peace building process will begin to do that, okay? And most of the traditional rulers in southern Kaduna were in Kafancha on that day when we signed that declaration. And HD uh, was to come back and begin a process of peace building. And this is why my opinion comes in. My sense is that the conflict entrepreneurs that live off this division decided they had to derail this process. And that is why we signed the agreement, the declaration in March, end of March, and the very first issue we had that led to this crisis began in Ninte in May, okay? Uh, there are people, believe it or not, and uh, you know, subsequent events and prosecutions will reveal this, there are people that have been living of this. As I speak, we are aware of some church leaders that have been getting money from abroad to bury Christians that have been killed, to rebuild thousands of churches that have been destroyed, because the more they put this on social media and give the impression that Christians are being targeted, the more dollars flow in. There are a couple of people that are being monitored and evidence is being accumulated uh, and will be prosecuted for this. Is there your proof of this? We, I will not say proof. Uh, the security agencies have been monitoring and as I said, when we have uh, actionable evidence, we are going to prosecute these people. But what I'm trying to say is that there is this is a business for some people. The deaths and the, the deaths of people and destruction of property is a business for some people. And we believe in the Kaduna state government that the successes that uh, occurred in Plato, in Jos, and our attempts to replicate that in southern Kaduna was what led to this renewed violence. Because what happened, what led to it was very simple. In a small community called Ninte, in Godogodo Chiefdom of Jama local government, there was a dispute between a farmer and a herdsman. The herdsman sent his son with cattle. He lives there. He's a local Fulani man that has lived there for years. So they know each other. Okay? And his cattle went and destroyed someone's farm. Simple problem. Sit, assess damage, pay. That's how it started. And... The matter could not be resolved, it went to the police. The Ardo, who is the leader of the Fulani, every Fulani group of Fulani communities has an Ardo, the leader. The Ardo heard about it, went to the police station, tried to get the dispute settled, and thought it had been settled, and came back. Monetary compensation was agreed, he came back, and two days later, his Ruga, his set, the, you know, where the Ardo lived, not the farmer that caused the problem, the Arab that tried to solve the problem was killed and his family, you know, attacked and one of his children escaped and went to Nasarawa State where his relations lived and five days later they came and attacked Ninti. Okay, now, why did that happen? One, it was a simple problem as I said, it could have been solved and it was solved but still someone paid youths, armed them 
to go and kill the Ardo. Okay? Mm. This is what started the problem. It was a totally avoidable, uh, avoidable problem. Where was the police? This, uh, this, this, this uh, killing of the Ardo was not, even inf was not even communicated to us to take proactive action. Okay? Right. Until the Fulanese organized themselves from Nas Nasarawa State and came and attacked Ninti. That was when the problem came. And Let since me. then, you know, there are people adding fuel to the fire so that this problem if, continues if could, to grow. If I could follow this up on uh, what you tried to explain about how that was misrepresented. Well, the, uh, General Aguayo also was speaking. He heard about that. He said, well, uh, I'm just trying to quote what he said in some of the interviews he granted about this particular. And said, yes, he also heard that rumor. His report is open. What the committee recommended was for the government to dialogue and compensate all the aggrieved parties. And so if there's going to be dialogue, it should include everybody. If there's going to be compensation, it should also include everybody, not an aggrieved party. No, 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 no. But it included everybody. What was the Kalfanja declaration about? 